Hello lovelies, my name is Stephanie. I am your GoPure esthetician and I am so excited to be live with you today to talk about moisturizers and moisturizing and all things that have to do with this amazing glowing skin we can get from moisturizing. So when you hop on, say hello. Let me know where you are joining me from. Ask me all your moisturizer questions because when I do these, I always love your questions and we're doing giveaways. Hi, Ellen. Oh, I'm so glad I can see comments on here too because Facebook sometimes hides comments. <laughs> we have Lorena on, Megan's on, Brittany's on, Sally is on, Patty is on joining from Mississippi. Okay, this is amazing. I'm so happy right now. What moisturizer questions do you have? I know this might seem like a fairly simple topic, but we get amazing skin and we hit our skin goals by leaning into the basics, by being super consistent with our skincare routine, but that really is in those basic steps of skincare. And moisturizing is one of the foundational steps that everyone needs, like everyone needs a moisturizer. So that being said, drop some hearts if you wanna win your choice of a GoPure moisturizer today because you know we're all about education here at GoPure and I am your educator and esthetician but we also love doing giveaways and that's really fun too so drop some hearts if you want your chance to win your choice of a GoPure moisturizer because we're going to be doing lots of giveaways and we actually are going to be choosing a winner from our replay watchers too so let us know if you're watching live or on replay and who's ready to have some fun today? I see tons of hearts. I see Diane from Oklahoma's on. Bethany's joining us from Washington. Patricia, that is a great question for argan oil. I love that. Christy's on. So Patricia wants to know, thoughts with combining argan oil with a liquid makeup? So I'll just answer that question right now because that was a great question. It depends on your makeup. <laughs> So makeup is like skincare. There's a base to a lot of things. Like is it water-based, silicone-based, oil-based? Or do they use waxes? And oil can be really beneficial to give a glow with your makeup. But oil doesn't play nicely with everything. Water doesn't play nicely with everything. And there's a lot of silicones in foundation. So you just kind of want to know what your foundation is. That's why I love um, putting my oil on after my moisturizer, letting it soak in for a little bit, then do my SPF and my makeup. I don't always mix it because I don't want them to maybe not play nicely together. That was a great question. All right, I'm gonna, I have a did you know to start because I almost wanted to do this like a game show because I did a game show in our GoPure VIP community. If you're not in there, you need to be in our exclusive VIP community where we do education like this all of the time but I really wanted to do this like a game show but so I'm probably going to be asking some questions throughout so this is a, a true or false so we're going to get ready who's ready for some questions oh Bethany thank you so much for the stars I love that oh my gosh Bethany that makes me so happy I love that GoPure has helped you this winter because again that's a great point winter skin is drier and you need a good moisturizer so true or false get ready get ready get ready get ready true or false there is a clinical scientific definition for a moisturizer so true or false there is a scientific clinical definition for what a moisturizer is in skincare drop true or false hi lisa oh from australia yay Oh, cold and snowy in Chicago. It is cold and snowy here in Denver too. That's where I am. I actually have an extra layer on with my scrubs because it's so cold and my office gets cold. So I have extra layers on even in my office. So I see a lot of true here. Lots of true. Rita loves the oils. I love that. Okay, this might surprise you. Interestingly enough, there is not a consensus regarding an actual definition of what a moisturizer is. Isn't that weird? Like we all think moisturizer, you know, you think, okay, moisturizer, it's my moisturizer. I put it on towards the end of my skincare routine. I know what a moisturizer is. When my skin feels dry, I put on a moisturizer, right? But in the world of like skincare and all of that, there's not like a true consensus over like, what is this definition? Because it's more of a category. And I'm gonna explain that, but it's kind of interesting. It, so, and uh, you know, it's one of those things that it's always gonna come down 
to the formulation and what it does. So we're gonna kind of talk about what moisturizing is, and then we're gonna get into some really cool skin facts, and we're gonna like talk about all of these awesome moisturizers and what's right for you. So we are gonna be choosing winners. So I want everyone here, If let me know if you have used GoPure or not. There's 105 people on here. Yes or no, you can say, I have used GoPure, I've never tried it. If you wanna try it, what is your experience? I would love to know that. Shannon, do you still use a moisturizer after a sheet mask? Yes, yes you do. A sheet mask is basically like a supercharged serum treatment for your skin. They can be used with your serums or they can be used as a standalone. They're like a, yeah, they're like a supercharged serum treatment and we always wanna finish with a moisturizer and I'm gonna explain why. So Marlene has, Sandra's used it for years. These are coming in so fast, I love this. I can't always read all the comments cause they come flying through so quickly. Bethany, almost one year now changed their skin, I love that. Peggy, I really like everything in the vitamin C. Vitamin C is amazing. Yes, okay. Everyone needs a moisturizer regardless of your skin type and moisturizing is an, a basic essential step in our skincare routine. So, okay, Steph, what does that mean? What is an essential step? What are the basics? There's a lot of different types of products in skincare, right? You could have a very simple, straightforward routine with very few products, or you can use a lot of different products. And some days it varies, right? And I love Rita. Rita been doing it for two, using it for two years. I love that. Michelle too, oh my gosh. Robin, that's so interesting because I love the smell of it. But it's something like that is so subjective. It's so subjective. Um, all right, I'm gonna get off track here because I love reading your comments so much. But an essential step in a skincare routine, like the bare bones basics, the things everyone needs to do. So next question. What are, if there are three essential steps in a skincare routine, who, what three steps do you think they are? Three types of product everyone needs. There's really only three of them, which is into like the bare bones, we're talking like bare bones basics skincare, okay? Drop in the comments if you know what those might be. We're talking the steps that everyone needs to do regardless the type of product that everyone needs, what would they be? Lorena says cleanse, tone, moisturizer. Beverly, yes, having fun while learning. Oh, thank you so much for the stars. I see a lot of cleanser, toner, moisturizer, cleanse, tone, serum, cleanse, tone, moisturize. Oh, if your skin's been very dry, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk all about, because if your skin feels dry, you need moisturizer. So moisturizer is one of them. Interestingly enough, part two of my questions for the day, Yes, everyone needs a cleanser. So you are all right. Everyone needs a cleanser. And I love that that one popped up. Sandra, yes, Sandra got it. Cleanse, moisturize, SPF. Those are the three steps everyone needs. Everyone needs a cleanser that works for their skin type, a moisturizer that works for their skin type. And then during the day, we should all be using some sort of sun protection. So those are the real three core components because there's a ton of different serums out there. There's even a lot of different types of toners out there. You know, there's a lot of those in-between steps in our skincare, right? We finish, we start with the cleanser, we kind of finish with moisturizing. And all of those in-between steps are really, really subjective. What our skin type is and what our skin concerns are really guide what choices we make right? If a foundation has SPF, Jennifer, you just want to make sure that you are using enough because here is a fact about sunscreen. Megan, we do not have SPF and GoPure products yet. It is something that we are working very diligently on. It is a high priority for us. Skincare is incredibly challenging to formulate and here at GoPure, we do not compromise with subpar products. We actually are striving to make the absolute best, absolute cleanest skincare you can get at the most affordable price. So regardless of your skin type, you need a moisturizer. Even oily skin needs some sort of moisturizer. But again, remember how we said like, there's no real definition in skincare for what a moisturizer is. Okay, so how does it something that we all need, but there's actually no official definition for what it is. That's what's kind of funny when you think about it. So what does a moisturizer do then? Okay, well a moisturizer is really like best friend to our skin barrier. And if 
drop some hearts or let me know if you've seen any of my lives before. Because if you've seen my lives, I say something in every single live that our skin is our largest organ and it works very, very, very hard to protect us. It's the organ that lives on the outside of our body. It's fighting the good fight every single day to protect us. Okay, what does that mean? It wants to keep the bad stuff out like bacteria and environmental allergens and pollution and all of those stressors. Oh, congratulations, Sandra, you won your choice of moisturizer. Congratulations, congratulations. See, we, we're doing, we're, we're choosing winners and we have a lot of people participating. So keep sharing, oh, share, 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 because this is on our main page. You can actually share this too. Share this with your friends, drop some comments for your chance to win. Rebecca, thank you for the stars. Linda sent some too, yay. All right, Lorena, I'm gonna get into that too. I'm gonna start talking the difference of the moisturizers in a bit. But with moisturizing, how does it help our skin really? Well, it helps with that process of barrier protection, a big part of our barrier and how it keeps the bad stuff out and then the good stuff in, which is the water content of our skin. It fights very hard to keep water in our skin and prevent what is called trans epidermal water loss and keep all of that bad stuff out. Essentially, our moisturizer supports that process. Our moisturizer helps reinforce that barrier and lock in the water component of our skin. So we choose what moisturizer is right for us based on a lot of other components. So the components that drive what we choose is what's our skin type? What are our skin concerns? What other skincare products are you using? And then we decide what is right for us. Now, our moisturizers here at Go Pure, I do wanna say these are clean formulations and we have this really cool airless pump to keep them clean so you're not sticking your hands in there. We don't have the parabens, we don't have dyes, formaldehyde, artificial fragrances, any of that stuff. We don't have those barrier disruptors. So just rest assured, these are really effective, awesome, clean formulations too. But with this barrier support in skin nourishment, there's a lot of different ways they do that because my definition of a moisturizer is basically an emulsion, which is you're mixing water components and humectants, things that we have in our skin. Remember, we wanna keep that water in our skin. So we have those components mixed with those other components that help support our barrier, like vitamins and fatty acids, and ceramides and peptides and all of those other things. So you mix a ton of those really great ingredients together and it supports that function of your skin. Somebody that has more oily skin is gonna want something a little more lightweight in a moisturizer and the drier your skin is, the less oil your skin produces. You want something more rich, something more nourishing. You absolutely want that, especially in the evening, those ceramides and all of that. Yeah, Linda, aren't the jars amazing? The jars are so good. All right, now, another question. I love, I love question time. So, our skin barrier is comprised, that magical lipid mix on the surface of our skin because our skin produces oil for a reason. That oil is what keeps our skin supple and really locks in that water component. Yeah, and combination skin needs a mix. Combination skin, because everyone's skin that's combination, Renita, has that mix of spots where you have produce more oil and spots where you produce less. So it's all about finding what works for you. Our barrier is a mix of those oils and ceramides. So all these, these lipids in our skin that lock it in. And we know as we age our skin, we lose collagen and elastin in our skin. And when we are exposed to UV, that accelerates. But as we age naturally, we also produce less oil and make less ceramides. So as we age, our barrier function naturally just becomes more compromised as a natural component of aging. This is why we need a moisturizer. And this is what blows my mind. Okay, get ready for a fact. Get ready for a fact that might blow your mind too. A lot of people ask me as an esthetician, okay, what time do, what age do I really need to start taking my skincare seriously? What age do I really need to take it seriously? And the conversation goes a lot to that loss of collagen and elastin in our skin that starts in our late 
20. So by the age of 30, yeah, you really need to start integrating active ingredients and some of those other things. But this is what we don't realize happens by the age of 30. Remember we're talking about ceramides? Those are, it's like the mortar between your cells. It's, ceramides are so important. By the age of 30, only 30, we could have lost up to 40% of the natural ceramides in our barrier. That is significant. And by the age of 40, which is my age, I'm 40, we have lost up to 60%. By the age of 40, that is significant. That is really, really significant. And that's where our moisturizer comes in because it is supportive of the loss of natural oil and the loss of natural ceramides that actually start happening much younger than we think. And then by the time we get around 50 and menopause, we start losing even more of that oil in our skin and it becomes even more significant. Yeah, Heather, isn't that crazy? It starts happening so young. And that's again why moisturization is just foundational. It's so important to start early, get going on a skincare routine, Yes, Peggy, vitamin C helps improve the appearance of dark spots for sure. And that's one of the reasons I love the vitamin C moisturizer. I know, Andrea, that, okay. And here's the thing too, is that one of the big differences between men and women in our skin is that men are not subje subjected as much to the natural oil loss that happens in the skin like women are. But remember, we lose lipids in different ways. We lose that natural oil production and we lose ceramides so significantly. And Lauren, that's what I hear a lot. I just wish I had started sooner, but it's never too late to start. And again, that's why using a moisturizer is so important because it really helps support our skin's barrier. It helps replenish those lipids and helps lock in the water in our skin. Because remember, that's what our barrier does is one of the main things it does is it locks in that water. And our moisturizers are this mix of really great hydrating components and really, really great oil components. Christine, how long does it take an older woman to notice any changes? No, it, no, the Peggy, that's totally fine. I love when you all leave comments and ask questions, like drop as many comments, questions, all of that. And so noticing changes in our skin just will depend on what you have in your routine, your level of consistency, and it always is individual. Everybody's journey in skincare is incredibly subjective and it's incredibly individual, but it's very important to have products that you love, that you will use and just stay consistent and then wear your sunscreen, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So let's talk about the difference between so we're talking hydration and moisturization because the word moisture gets thrown around a lot. So when we hear the word moisture in our skin and skincare, what comes to mind? What comes to mind when someone says moisture or moisturizer? Drop anything in the comments because I've seen some stuff before and you guys have dropped some really great comments so far. So what just like what comes to mind? Oh, Judy, thank you for sharing. Yes, please, please, please share. Please share. I love that. Donna, yes, I do apply serums to my neck before the neck cream. Patient says creams. Yes, that's great. Yes, and Sally says drink water and stay hydrated for sure. Hydration in the skin, that is great, Megan. That's a great comment. Glowing skin, that's what Melissa says. Cream, yes. So there's a lot of different things that come to mind when we think moisturizer. Ellen, do you think pimples? Does that come to mind when you think more? Because that, that actually is not uncommon. Um, Sometimes there's actually a stigma that goes along with moisturizer that it's going to be too heavy and it's going to cause breakouts. I see words like glow, hydration, oil, glowing. I love that. I love all of this. So there's kind of a difference between hydration and moisture and moisturization. And the word moisturizer gets thrown around a lot, but I want everyone to think of like a spectrum of ingredients and water ingredients are on one end. And oil-based ingredients are on the other end, right? Because oil and water don't naturally mix. They naturally repel each other. And so we have these moisturizers that have both oil and water components to them. And that's what we're imparting in the skin with a moisturizer. But I wanna set the stage here, if I may, and I want you all to think a little differently about the difference between hydration and moisturization in the world of skin and skincare. Because when I talk as an esthetician and an educator about hydration, 
I'm thinking and I'm trying to explain water. Water in the skin, and there's ingredients called humectants, and their job is to grab onto water. And yes, Judy, hyaluronic acid is a humectant that holds up to a thousand times its weight in water and really locks it in the skin. And there's other humectants. We love aloe here at GoPure. Aloe is one of my favorite ingredients. You also have glycerin and natural forms of hyaluronic acid like tamarind seed. So we pack our moisturizers with all of these hydrators that their job is to grab onto moisture and pull it into our skin to keep it hydrated because that's very, very, very important. But what will happen, and that we have serums that will do that too. Serums whose special job is to be packed with those hydrators and humectants that you want to grab onto water and pull into the skin to diminish the appearance of fine lines and keep it plump and all of that. Because when our skin gets dehydrated, it gets red, our lines and wrinkles look more visible and deeper. It's irritated, it's blotchy, it's uneven, it can be rough. And so all of these things happen when our skin gets dehydrated. So when we have those components that help lock onto water and pull them into the skin, we are helping improve the appearance of all of those things, right? Oh, Heather, thank you so much for liking and sharing. So a moisturizer can kind of do both of those things. It's gonna have those hydrators and hyaluronic acid and, and glycerin and aloe and water itself and all of these things that will hydrate the skin. And then when I talk about moisture and moisturization, I'm talking about the other end of that conversation, the other end of that spectrum, and that is the oil component. Those are those lipids. Those are those nourishing components like jojoba oil and shea and sunflower seed and those ceramides and all of that stuff that help lock that in. And now we're gonna do another fact here. Did you know? We are gonna do another did you know? I would be lost without the serums too. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Did you know, did you know? Who's ready? Drop some hearts if you're ready. If we just hydrate the skin and we don't lock in the moisture component, if we don't add the oil on top those or that moisturizer on top, if we don't seal in, so if we only used humectants, if we only use things that put water in the skin, now think also how I talked about how we naturally lose oil and ceramides and our barrier becomes much less strong, even starting as early at the age of 30 to 40. If we don't lock that in, our skin can actually become more dehydrated because when we have components that grab onto water, they're grabbing onto it. That's why we apply those on damp skin. They get them from the environment and then they pull it from our skin too. Yeah, we're all sitting here drinking our water, right? We're drinking our water because we want our skin to be hydrated. We want our skin to be able to use all of those amazing components in our serums and moisturizers. But if we don't seal it in, yes, Vanessa, it's like waxing your car. <laughs> if we don't lock it in, it's going to eventually evaporate and it could take some of the good moisture that we work so hard to get on there along with it. And patience, that is quite possible. So you think your skin is chronically dehydrated. So dry skin is a lack of oil in the skin. Dehydrated skin is a lack of water. And if we don't, make sure that we are reinforcing our skin barrier. If we're not properly moisturizing with a moisturizer, or even our oils, it can actually become more dehydrated and it can be kind of a chronic situation, especially in winter. I mean, drop some hearts if you are so excited to get into spring because moisture and hydration in the air is hard to come by in the winter. Our skin feels more dry in the winter. You know, our heaters that are on, it pulls moisture out of our skin. Our skin is out here, like I said, fighting a good fight all of the time. And yes, Linda, moisturizers seal in the moisture. They lock in that hydration. They use that oil component on that one end of the spectrum to lock in the water component that is on the other end of the spectrum. All right. Did I make any sense or am I just babbling? Because I get really excited about this and sometimes I wanna make sure I'm not just babbling. But yes, you need a good moisturizer because that is that final step that locks in all of, yes, Ellen, Utah's brutal, so is Colorado. It's just brutal on the skin and we have to help our skin do its job. And a moisturizer is 
the thing that will do it. That's why it's an essential. That's why everyone, everyone needs it. Now, I'm gonna drop another fact for you. And this is a really interesting fact I would like to share. Yes, and Peggy, your whole body. We feel it head to toe, because remember, skincare just isn't here. <laughs> We feel it head to toe. Yes, Monica, it's, I believe that Montana winters are up. And we do, we feel it head to toe, not just on our face. And I am absolutely guilty of do doing such a great amount of skincare right here and not as good on the rest of my body. And I feel it. Yes, and the, I'll talk about that. But when we're talking about that other end of the spectrum, where one end is water and another end is oil, this is pure moisturization. This is pure oil. This is pure lock all in that goodness, deliver the nutrients. So if your skin is feeling extra dry, you can actually top your moisturizer with an oil and lock it all in. All right, Amy, that is a great question. And then I'm gonna get to my did you know. If we feel like our skin is having a hard time absorbing or you feel like your moisturizer just isn't doing what you know it can do, it could come down to exfoliation. Exfoliation we do two to three times a week. It helps remove those superficial dead cells and it actually helps prepare our skin to be more able to absorb the ingredients in our skincare. So absolutely. Um, Exfoliation really helps our moisturizers work better. Does oil clog your pores? Patient, that is a great question too. I just did last week a live all about oils in our VIP community. Make sure you're in there and check out that live. But what I want to say about oils clogging pores is there's a lot of different oils out there and a lot of different sizes of molecules and all of that. So it will always come down to the oil. There are some oils that are non-comedogenic, they have a rating of that is very low or zero that will, will not be pore clogging, then you have other ones that can be. And Liesl, the difference between those, make sure you check out that live because I went all into it. But I'm gonna try and finish this live if I have time talking about the oils for sure. Okay, so did you know, did you know, did you know? This is my did you know. When we finish with a moisturizer and an oil, it can actually also help drive in the other ingredients in our skincare routine deeper into the skin. That is another really cool component of moisturizer is that it can help. A lot of what a moisturizer does is actually very superficial. It's meant to work on our barrier, which is on the top of our skin. So a lot of what it does works in those upper layers which is amazing, right? But it can help drive your other skincare in deeper too. Vicki, yeah, rosehip can do that if you, if you apply a lot because it is golden for sure. So yeah, it can actually help, especially when you're using things that are more rich. So the more oil that is in your moisturizer, the more it locks everything in, the more it can actually help drive your other skincare ingredients in deeper too. Isn't that cool? So moisturizers, let's, okay, let's start getting into it. Let's start getting into the products. Kathy, do you exfoliate then? Okay, yes. So I, where exfoliation comes in if you're using a scrub, you would cleanse, you would use the scrub, then tone and use your serums and everything else. My general rule where exfoliation fits in is that it, it depends on stuff that stays on your skin and stuff that you wanna remove from your skin. There is stuff like, I can pull this out like our anti-wrinkle sheet mask that has alpha hydroxy acids in it. This is kind of meant to stay on the skin. So I would do this after toning, but something like a scrub, I would do just after cleansing. Then you could do your enzyme mask and continue with your routine. So let's talk a little bit about different moisturizers that we have here at GoPure. I got hydrate, I'm doing all this talking. <laughs> Sandra, great question. Do you tone before or after the enzyme mask? That is a personal choice. We tone when we are ready for the steps where skincare stays on the skin. So if you wanted to use the enzyme mask and then wipe it off, and then you really wanted to maybe remove a little bit of that balminess, you could absolutely tone and then move on with the rest of your routine. If you wanted to leave that balminess on, you could either choose to not tone at all, or you could just do a quick tone before you did it. It kind of depends on how much of that you want to stay off the skin after you wipe it away. All right, which oil do I prefer? 
I love the rose hip during the day and I love the argan at night because the argan just feels a little more rich on my skin. Can you mix moisturizers? I don't know. I mean, you could potentially, but this is what I will say. And that's actually a great question about mixing products. So we have all of these products that are specifically formulated with ingredients that are meant to work together. Remember, we have all of those hydrators. We have those vitamins. We have those botanical blends, those oils, those peptides, all of those yummy delicious things that our skin wants and needs, right? But all of these are formulated to work together. Then you have stuff like our vitamin C moisturizer, same type of thing. You have your hydrators, you have your yummy oils, you have that active vitamin C that's in there. And we just wanna make sure that we, sometimes when we mix, we wanna make sure we're not altering the pH of products or, or some of those other things that can happen. And I'm gonna kind of go through them one by one. So, some cool things about using a moisturizer. See, notice we see like this one's a vitamin C. This one is our glycopeptide anti-wrinkle moisturizer that features a bunch of peptides, glycolic acid, niacinamide, our botanical blend, amazing, right? Then we have stuff like a retinol cream that features retinol with those hydrators and moisturizers in there. These are all very different, but think about it. We have a vitamin C serum, and we have a vitamin C moisturizer, right? And we have stuff like a serum with retinol and a retinol moisturizer. There are two different ways that we can integrate a moisturizer into our routine when they do feature active, awesome ingredients that are meant to do so. Yeah, so which is your favorite moisturizer? Let me know, and what do you use day and night? Moisturizers, if you want a very, very, very simple routine, a moisturizer can be kind of used, especially how what we do here at Go Pure, is we pack them not just with those hydrators and those, those lipids, we pack them with other vitamins and active ingredients so they do a lot of really cool things for your skin, basically. <laughs> you could layer moisturizer, absolutely, Linda, and I will do that. I'm much more of a fan of layering than mixing sometimes, but that is a great comment. So if you want a more simplified routine, you can actually, treat something like a retinol cream or a vitamin C moisturizer as an all-in-one. I want the simplest routine, I want the bare bones basics, I want to cleanse and I want to moisturize and I want to during the day use my SPF and get on with get on with my life. So they can be used kind of as a standalone with your active ingredient and all your moisturizing or they can be used in conjunction with your other serums day and night to really boost the efficacy of that serum and then focus on that hydrating and moisturizing component. There are two ways. Do you want kind of an all-in-one? Do you want a simpler routine? Some nights I do, some nights I just keep it really simple. Thomas, um, all of this skincare works for men and women. So skincare is for everybody and there are no products that are, men and women's skin does have differences but it's not as different in a lot of ways. So these are all things that everyone needs. So let's start with the vitamin C. I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna run out of time because I love talking. I'm gonna talk more about the retinol as I go through these, but I will use this as an all-in-one. On a night when I want something simpler, I will just do the basics of my routine. I will cleanse and tone. I will put on my retinol moisturizer and my eye care and go to bed. <laughs> it is so great when I want something simple, but then I will also use it when I want to have a night where I do more of a treatment with my retinol serum too. So there's two ways to think about it. All right, now, vitamin C. Who uses this during the day? I have a confession. I have a confession. I struggle to find a moisturizer that works with my skin during the day. I have combination sensitive skin and my pores are very prone to congestion. <laughs> My pores get clogged, not necessarily breakout clogged because I manage that well, but they, if I use the wrong moisturizer during the day, it just will make my pores look bigger. And so I am the ultimate skeptic when it comes to moisturizers. I am so obsessed with this moisturizer. I love this moisturizer during the day. It does not, it makes my skin feel like perfectly hydrated, perfectly moisturized. So I get that balance of oil and water that's amazing. And I was shook. I was floored when I used this for the first time that my pores did not start looking bigger right away. 
And I will tell you that if something's going to congest someone's pores, it will be me. <laughs> So I am the ultimate skeptic when it comes to moisturizers because I'm like, okay, how's this gonna work on my 40 year old combination skin that gets super shiny through here, but I get dry and blotchy out here and I can break out hormonally and all of this stuff. Cause we talked about our concerns with, I mean, I saw people saying concerns with breakouts and issues. I, I love, love, love this. And patients, the difference between a moisturizer with vitamin C and a serum, I'm gonna address this right now. Great question. Serums are always going to have a higher concentration of that active ingredient. So both of these have vitamin C. They both have a very stable form of vitamin C that is very effective. It's a potent antioxidant. It's gonna help diminish the appearance of uneven skin tone and dark spots. But this is going to be moisturizing and nourishing and it's gonna have those hydrators and those emollients and those delicious oils. It's gonna be lightweight but not heavy and something like this is going to be more of like a supercharged skin treatment if you really want to target those concerns of dark spots this is going to have a much higher concentration of that vitamin c it also has kaduku plum that additionally targets those concerns I and mean, it's going to be very hydrating so and you can see the difference in the weight of them so and that's a great question if you're using a serum why would i need a moisturizer with that ingredient well Antioxidants are very important for day. So this vitamin C moisturizer is my daytime best friend, but see how this is very hydrating. This doesn't have, it's not rich in those oils and it's gonna go on and it's gonna be like a supercharged dose of that ingredient. That's a really great question. Then I'm gonna top it with my vitamin C moisturizer and I love you just need like a blueberry. So blueberry size is kind of your go-to. I do kind of a pump and a half. That's just what works for me. Then you go on and you top your serum with your moisturizer. That is going to give an additional boost of that ingredient, but it's really focusing on the nourishing component, those additional vitamins, you know, getting that additional boost of hydration and then locking it in with those oils. This feels so good. Oh my goodness, I wanna put this on my other hand, but I need to reserve it for my other products. Did that answer your question, the difference between the two? So our serum steps, are gonna be a supercharged, higher concentration of those active ingredients that are gonna be more hydrating, lighter weight, you need just a few drops. Moisturization is that step that its purpose is to moisturize and just deliver an extra boost of that active ingredient. I don't refrigerate my moisturizers, Amy, because when you have oil components to things in a fridge, it can actually get a little thicker and it has a possibility of changing the consistency. It won't hurt it. I love refrigerating my serums. I don't always love refrigerating my moisturizers because sometimes they're a little uh, too cold and sometimes actually warming your moisturizer in between your hands can help product penetration. So colder, a colder product with a moisturizer because it that has that oil component is going to sit a little more superficially on the skin. So vitamin C moisturizer is going to have shea, it's going to have sunflower seed, it's going to be rich in vitamin E and vitamin C and those antioxidants that we need during the day because during the day, the sun and that UV exposure causes oxidative stress. So we want ingredients that are packed with antioxidants that are gonna be just an amazing weight. Yes, and that is a great way to do it too, Liesl, is to alternate. So we have the vitamin C moisturizer also has vitamin B5, which is like cousins to niacinamide, which is additionally soothing and helps battle redness in the skin as well. It's incredible. I absolutely love the vitamin C moisturizer and it is just so great for daytime. And I do see people that alternate too, that's perfectly acceptable. I'm just, I'm so obsessed with the vitamin C moisturizer for daytime. So now let's talk about the iconic glycopeptide anti-wrinkle moisturizer. It has been called a facelift in a jar. It is amazing. I prefer this at night but I know people use it during the day. There's even some people that will alternate it with their retinol. So that's a great way to do it too. Remember, skincare is subjective. You need to do what works for you. And with moisturizers in particular, sometimes it takes playing around. Sometimes it's seasonal changes. I do something different in the winter than I do in summer. So I want everyone to know that I'm kind of making these 
generalized recommendations. It will always, always, always come down to you, where you live, your environment, because where we live makes a big difference, your skincare habits, what other products you're using, all of those things. So this glycopeptide anti wrinkle moisturizer is so great. It's not heavy at all. It's um, enriched with peptides. It has a peptide ceramide blend. It actually has niacinamide. Did you all know this has niacinamide in it too? And that glycolic acid that works as a hydrator and helps improve product penetration and all of that. Yes, Michelle used it during the day. I'm in retinal moisturizer at night. That's awesome. That's amazing. And I, I love when you all share what you do with your routine because it, it just, it's, it's all different. And if you are reactive to a moisturizer, it's okay. Sometimes it's, if it's not for you, sometimes it's what you're using along with it. It, it all just depends. Oh, Roxanne's loving your enzyme mask. I love that because the enzyme mask is so rich in oils too. And it's really like a moisturizing mask. So it's like this supercharged moisturizer treatment. If you haven't used the enzyme mask, you, you have to get it. It's, so good. And I know so many of you use it as a night cream. Um, so I want to share some facts about the anti-wrinkle moisturizer. So one of the things that is so amazing about this is it does have those ceramides. Remember I was talking about how we lose ceramides naturally. Those can be replenished topically. And so I love that this has the ceramides. It has those peptides. Peptides are the building blocks of collagen. Collagen is what you know, when we lose collagen as we age, that's where those um, lines and wrinkles come into play. We lose collagen with age and with sun exposure. Those are the two main things. Peptides are the building blocks of collagen. You cannot apply collagen topically, but you can apply peptides. So yes, it is, yes, it's amazing. And I love this. And this is fortified with vitamins and it has this really amazing botanical blend in here, which I love. And this is clinically tested too. That's one thing that's really amazing. This moisturizer actually has clinical tests that go along with it. Um, and that's why it's called the anti-wrinkle moisturizer. So the hydration component, dermatologist evaluations of 45 people revealed a significant improvement in skin's appearance after just 15 days, 15 days, including improved hydration, better skin elasticity, and a smoother skin surface. That's awesome. That's really, really awesome. And I saw someone asked, how soon can we see an improvement? You know those things like the improved appearance and hydration and a smoother skin surface, you know, this clinical study was just saw an improvement in just 15 days, which is amazing. I see all these questions and sometimes they go by faster than I can read. So I apologize. Carrie, would this be a good for that? You know, I, eye products are meant for the eye. So any eye products I would use around the eye and then you can top with this all around the face, but yes, this is kind of that improve the appearance of firm skin and lines and wrinkles and all of that. Now, another ingredient Matrixel showed a three dimensional decrease in wrinkles by up to 31% uh, percent, up to 100%. That's amazing. So these individual ingredients really have clinically proven results behind them. In a study of 24 females, skin surface occupied by the look of wrinkles was reduced up to 98% after 56 days. That's a huge improvement, up to 98% after 56 days. So again, skincare is subjective. It's gonna depend on a lot of different factors, but this is what a really sophisticated, clinically proven moisturizer can help do. Um, and if you can go on our website too, I mean, you don't need to just believe me. I just have little snippets here, but check out our website, go to the GoPure website. These clinical studies are on the website. We have a page dedicated to the moisturizers and you can see, oh, Ellen, you wish you could post your before and afters. If you're in our VIP group, please, 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 please share your before and afters because that makes a really big difference. And we have over 32,000 five-star reviews on our website and people share their before and afters. They share their experience. So go read those too, share your before and afters and, and check those out because it makes a big difference. And I have a dear friend of mine that was like, what is in that moisturizer? It completely changed my skin. Like she was stunned and she is great with skincare. She uses, she's used all of these things, stuff that is way more expensive. And I will tell you that yes, I'm an esthetician, but I'm not gonna tell people to use things I would not want my own friends to use because 
my friends do. They use this. Stuff. When I say this is amazing, they will use it. And I will not tell someone to use something or if it's not awesome because I'm not going to have my, my friends using it. I'm not going to have you all using something I don't think is awesome. I'm here for you guys. I think you are all amazing. And my big, amazing group of Go Pure friends. She was like, what is in that moisturizer? It is rocking my world and changing my skin for the better. It's so great. So great. Megan, I love the vitamins. Yes every morning and night, and you can use a vitamin C moisturizer day and night. That's what I love about vitamin C. It can be used day and night, day and night. All right, I gotta, I gotta keep moving. That's, that's just like skimming the surface on the anti-wrinkle moisturizer. Janice, lip lines is one of those things. I'm gonna, we're gonna, lip lines around the eye and the neck. Those are areas that are areas of movement and they're, they're thin and they're delicate areas. And so our skincare is so important because it can help a lot, but everyone is very subjective. And there's also a lot of physiological underlying changes that happen when we age. And one of them is a loss of subcutaneous fat and a thinning of different areas in the skin. So the layers of our skin literally thin. So we have that epidermis, that is the top part that thins. The dermis, that thins and we lose collagen and elastin in our skin and we lose hyaluronic acid naturally too. That's all in the dermis. Then we have below that is our subcutaneous fat layer and a section that connects that called the dermal epidermal junction in between our epidermis and our dermis. All of those layers thin. And skincare is really going to help with the condition of our skin and improving the appearance of those things. But we also have to respect the fact that as we age, especially in those areas of movement, they get really impacted by those physiological changes of, of thinning skin. That's another thing that contributes to that. So that's why we want all of these amazing products that can hopefully penetrate deeply and, and improve some of those things. But there's also physiology that is happening too in those areas also. And I always want to make that side note about our skin and about skincare. I'm trying to see this and I can't see the first part of it. Ask Stephanie first because I may be wrong. I didn't see the first part of that so I might need to see that again. We're gonna we're gonna talk about retinol moisture or the retinol cream now. So retinol cream. Retinol cream is basically like your retinol serum mixed into a moisturizer. This is the easiest way I can explain what a retinol cream is. And why I love retinol cream, retinol cream is really interesting. I think a retinol moisturizer is something that everyone needs. And here is why. Here's why I think everyone needs a retinol cream because this is why I like to start. If you are just starting on retinol because if you've seen any of my lives on retinol and drop some hearts if you've seen my any of my lives on retinol, retinol is one of those ingredients that has rules. Retinol has rules. So this is a nighttime. This is exclusively for nighttime because we don't want to use retinol during the day. And patients, that's a great question. I'm actually going to talk about that. So retinol, we have to start slowly. We don't mix it with our exfoliating products and we start just a little bit at a time. A retinol cream, it's such an easy way to start retinol. If we've never ever used retinol before, I say start a retinol cream a couple times a week. See how your skin does. Slowly increase it. Then you can introduce a retinol serum. Now, patients ask, can we combine this with a retinol serum? Some people that works great. Some people that is too much because again, everyone's skin is different. And because yes, retinol has rules, it does. And I'm never gonna make a blanket statement that someone can pair a retinol cream with a retinol serum because it, it's gonna depend. And I'm an advanced retinol user, so I can't because I know how my skin reacts to retinol serums and to a retinol moisturizer. Some nights when I want it to be super simple and straightforward, I will just use my retinol moisturizer. The nights where I'm doing more of a treatment routine, I will layer, but again, I have sensitive skin as well. And so, but we have a lot of users at GoPure that we'll use them together. So what does retinol do? That is a great question. Retinol is the most proven skincare ingredient there is out there. And there's a lot of different types of retinol and retinoids, but what retinol really does is it works on improving the appearance 
of those lines and wrinkles in the skin, but it also has a positive impact on the appearance of large pores and dark spots and a lot of those signs of aging. So really retinol is kind of like the cornerstone ultimate and I hate the word anti-aging, but like anti-aging skincare ingredient because it really does check all of those boxes. But because it's so effective, there's always a potential for irritation. And sometimes the dryness and redness that goes along with using retinol is really a sign that it's actually doing its job. We just need to back off and maybe take it a little more slowly. If you're seeing um, some of those, some of that irritation, that's why I say retinol has rules. We start very slowly because we want it to be able to do its job. And the retinol, yeah, Angela says she's the retinol serum and moisturizer, absolutely loves it. We have a lot of people that use them together. And again, my night routine always changes. And so I love if you're just starting, retinol is not plant-based. If someone says plant-based retinol, it's gonna be a retinol alternative. So that's a good point. Donna uses it two to three times a week. I love that retinol also doesn't need to be used every single night. So yes, retinol does not need to be used every single night. So I love this retinol cream, it's not heavy. And one thing I will show you is that retinol actually does have a yellowish tint to it. So that is an indicator of re retinol being present and you can see our retinol serum, this firm and lift serum is very, very yellow. So you can see that has an even higher concentration of retinol in it because it is even brighter yellow with the Actis Firm and Lift Serum. And I think patients, you were the one that asked, this has retinol and Bacuchio in it. Uh, Bacuchio is a retinol alternative. So this uses a retinol, a clinical retinol, and it uses Bacuchio. I know, Amy, it does look like mustard. <laughs> It, it is one of those things in skincare, it just is. But that is a plant-based retinol alternative. So we actually have both in this serum, which is really, really cool. So retinol and a retinol cream, and why I love this cream is that it has vitamin E, it has green tea, it has that vitamin B5, which is that panthenol that is soothing and smoothing. And this feels amazing. This is a, a phenomenal retinol cream. So I really, really think that everyone needs a retinol cream, but like I will say, you have to make sure that you are properly moisturizing when you are using retinol serums. And that's why a retinol cream is so great for so many people because you kind of mix your moisturizer and your serum into one, and then you can just increase with additional serums as well. And it's so great. And it is, it's very, very subjective and it penetrates and it's just amazing. So now let's talk about the neck area. Who has tried our neck cream? Who has tried our neck cream here? Moisturization is not just for the face. Moisturization, we need head to toe. We were talking about how we were, some of us in drier areas can really feel it in our body in the winter, right? And this area, <laughs> this area right here, our neck is, the skin is thinner and it produces less oil naturally. It's an area of movement, it's very exposed, and Lorena, yes, it feels like absolute silk, and it is amazing. And like I was talking about earlier with those physiological changes that happen as we age, with those all of our layers of our skin thin, well, this area is already thinner, just like the eye area. This area starts out thinner. This area starts out thinner too, and so as we age and those areas produce less oil and thin additionally, that's how we get that crepiness. And so this cream is so awesome because it really is formulated to target the concerns of this area. And we get a lot of questions, and I saw this, could you use your other moisturizers on your neck? Absolutely you could. Absolutely you absolutely can. Do we put our serums on our neck? I say yes, go for it. Put your serums on your neck underneath your moisturizer. The reason why a neck cream is so amazing is like we go up the front, down our jawline, and then down the sides. That's what I do. Is that this area and this skin is different than the skin on our face and it does have different needs. And so this has a proprietary formulation that really is made for your neck. It is made for that additional thinness, that extra crepiness and sagginess that can happen without being heavy. So it has natural peptides and it has a blend that we call our proactive repair firming complex that 
every part of this neck cream is actually formulated for the neck. And yes, Renita, I completely, completely agree with putting serums on the neck. And because that's how it works. We cleanse, we tone, we do our serums and any boosters, and then we top with a moisturizer. Same thing for our neck. We still want those additional steps on our neck area to get maximum results. And we want to seal it with that moisturizer. Yes, and Brittany, oils are last. And Candace, if you have not tried the neck cream, I will say if you're gonna use a neck product, take a before and after. Because the changes in our skin that happen to get to where we are now, they didn't happen overnight, did they? We didn't get these lines and wrinkles overnight. We did not get sagging skin overnight. We did not get dark spots overnight. And so the improvements happen gradually too. And I have found as an esthetician, especially on areas like the eye area, dark spots and the neck area, that those changes because the improvements can happen gradually too, they can be easy to miss. And I'm a huge fan of before and afters. Um, for the neck area in particular. And this really does have a blend of ingredients. And we have a lot of clinical data behind this as well that show improved hydration, an improvement in the look of sagging skin, an improvement in firmness, and even in discoloration. And yes, you can use the neck cream on the back of your hands. You can use any of these moisturizers on the backs of your hands for sure. I just always take whatever I have left over from my serums and my moisturizers and put them on the backs of my hands. And it's very, very, like it does, it feels like silk. And I love that we don't add any fragrance or any of those parabens or anything like that. You really are just getting pure, potent skincare with those active ingredients and those botanical blends. And Peggy, that's really what it is formulated for. And that's a big difference is that crepiness in the skin is one of the main things that this cream targets. And so again, it's the appropriate weight for the thinness of the skin to deliver that mix of like we were talking about earlier, the mix of those water components, that hydration, those awesome oils and that nourishment, and then all of those vitamins and nutrients and peptides and all of those other things that we want to work. And yes, and it's always, always, always at an amazing price. And I have said this about this before, if you've heard me talk about this neck cream, I'm gonna share a little secret with you, okay? So I study skincare for my job and I have for a very long time. I've been in the beauty industry 20 years. I've been a clinical esthetician for a decade. There are products out here, out in the world of skincare, that have a fraction of the active ingredients we put in our products, but especially things like our neck cream and our anti-wrinkle moisturizer and our serums. But this neck cream, when I saw the ingredient list and the price, I was floored. There are products out there, and neck creams in particular, that have a fraction of those active ingredients that are easily twice exp as expensive. I will say, as your, your best friend esthetician, because that's what I am. I am your SD bestie here. I don't believe anywhere out there, there is a neck cream that has the potent ingredients that we have at this price. This neck cream is a fraction of the price of our competitors. And I think it's way, way, way better. <laughs> like period, end of sentence. Like I, it truly, and it's just not the neck. Yes, it's the neck and the decollete and we can use it on the backs of our hands and all of those things. That's what, that's really what it comes down to with these is that they are, I know Michelle, it's, and they are, they're just, we pack them with all of those, all of that skincare goodness for just, a fraction of the price and it's awesome. And I love that you're excited patients and you're asking really, really great questions. I am, I'm your SD bestie here to help you navigate the world of skin and skincare. So I know we've come towards the end of our time but I did wanna make a comment on the oils. So an oil is just pure moisturization. It doesn't have the water component. It is just pure skin goodness. And we can, if you feel like your skin needs more of that nourishment, if you wanna lock in that hydration even more, you can finish with an oil. And sometimes you can just use them at night. You can use them day or night depending on your skin. And you can just take a few pumps and press it on at the very end of your routine to bolster even what your moisturizer is doing. 
And I saw a question about deep lines. Deeper lines are always gonna be even more challenging, but that's why I say take before and after pictures because the improvement in the hydration and the work of those peptides and those other active ingredients are really what work on improving the appearance of those deep lines. And that's why I always say take it before and after and just see what is possible for you and for your skin because when you have products that are targeted for specific areas and really intentionally formulated, that's when you're gonna get those results and you have day and night. Neck cream, in my opinion, is a day and night, it's a day and night thing for sure. So drop some hearts if you're in our VIP community. If you learned something here today, make sure you're in our Go Pure VIP community. We go live weekly in there pretty much. We're gonna be doing a little more balance between what's in the VIP group and what we're doing here on this page, but make sure you're in the VIP community. You can ask tons of questions in there. You can see before and afters, people share their experience, because again, skincare is subjective and everybody has a different amount of time and a different amount of products they like to use. And there's just so many ways that you all share your experience and your journey that is so beneficial. And it's just this wonderful, uplifting, positive community. And we do giveaways in there and we give away lots of cool things. So you wanna be in there for sure. Make sure you're um, in that community as well. And again, I could talk about moisturization all the time. I could go live for the whole time just talking about one of these products. And I do on this page, I have gone live about the neck cream. I've gone live about our anti-wrinkle moisturizer and done a whole live just dedicated to those. I just did a live last week in the group talking all about our oils. So this was kind of the all about moisturizers, but really moisturization 101, what they are, what they do, how they can fit into your routine, what's best for day and night. And really I wanted it to you know, share that everyone does need a moisturizer and it can change seasonally, but you want products that are formulated with intention and just find what works for each and every one of you. So thank you so much for being with me today, for letting me be your SC bestie and for sharing all the love that you have for Go Pure because we absolutely love that. And we, we abs, oh, Lorena, that's a really good question. As of yet, no, my Spanish isn't good enough to do a full Spanish speaking one, but I think that's a great suggestion and we love your suggestions, but thank you for being here today. I value your time and I love how much time you all have spent and keep sharing this. Remember, we're still choosing a replay winner. So share and make sure you join our VIP community. Congratulations to all of the winners. And next week, I'm gonna be doing a live in our VIP community, and I'm gonna be talking all about layering. So I'm gonna be talking about layering your skin, layering your skincare products. It's one of my favorite topics. So if you wanna learn start to finish layering skincare, make sure you join that community as well so you can have access to the exclusive lives and education that we share in that space too. I appreciate you, Alan. Patience, great questions this whole time. And thank you all so much for joining us. And you all have a great day and a great week. And I hope to see you in that community to be able to connect further. Bye.